Hey guys, this is Mike, and this is part 7 of the LiveGDX Kotlin game. So, uh, there's only a few gameplay updates. Um, I've made here some more levels. Uh, I've made so many that they've started to overflow into the back button here, and they couldn't fit all on this one screen, so I made this sort of page system where if I keep adding more levels, it'll just keep going on and on to the right, and then you can scroll back and forth. Um, so those are levels there. Uh, another thing that I did was uh, made this level maker down here because um, before I made that I used to just, the way I made levels was basically just type it, in, type it out over here and if I wanted like a 4x4 I'll do here and then I'll have to do something like that and then mess around with the tiles here. I want a tile here, here, here. And it got really annoying uh, really fast, especially if I had to change the no the dimensions of the grid. Like if I wanted five rows instead and seven columns, like I'd have to go back here and start like uh, making more like that and then just copy this thing five times and then yeah, uh, make each of the tiles here and it was just bad especially if I had like a lot of tile mechanics in the level like um, one of them this one has a lot of arrows in it <laughs> so that it was just really bad trying to make levels this way so I made this this uh, level maker here so this helps me to quickly just create a level. Um, so over here if I wanted a level like this, like a 5x5, five five, I could just make it like that. And then have it be a cross like that or something. Uh, so I can also really quickly go through it just with this ghetto like uh, sort of system where I can just change the tile color. So if I start here, I can go here, then down, then go all the way, maybe I'll go here, then back, and then I'll solve it, 29 moves. And I can easily just edit it by uh, going over here, I'll be like, uh, I don't like this tile over here, I'll make it like this or something, like a face. <laughs> I'll start over here, I'll go this way and then this way or something like that and I'll finish it like that um, so yeah and the way this works is I can take this and I can export it and it'll basically put into your clipboard a text that you can paste so over here if I go to the first level I can just paste and there it is there's the level I just made over here the smiley face if I go back to the uh, thing Go to level one. There it is. There's the level, and it should be the same as this, which it is. So I can also add the level mechanics here: up arrows, down arrows, jumps, and teleports, like that. And it helps to make levels way faster. I'll go up here, and the test is just me, <laughs> just uh, flipping each of these tiles. Um, another thing that I really, really wanted to do was, um, trying to find some kind of algorithm to give me the best scores for each of the levels. So, for example, this level, uh, the best that I came up with is 11, and I'm pretty sure that's the best because it's the minimum number of moves it takes to finish off the rest of the 11 tiles, but maybe you didn't get that and it took you a while to figure it out and you did something like this instead or you go over here and then you finish it in 15 moves so that would be your best score uh, currently but it's not the minimum and I wanted to find an algorithm that would give me the minimum number of moves per level so and one of the things that I started trying to do was brute force um, like I did with other games uh, before so for example that previous level 
here. Uh, this is just a four by three. And then we got up arrows here, and then we got down arrows here. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick something else that doesn't have arrows in it. So this level looks pretty good. Clear this out. So this level right here, and then I start off right here. So I if I wanted to use brute force, I'd be like, okay, so from here, where do I go? Left up, left right, or down? Um, so let's say I go left and then, or let's say my heuristic is really simple. I'll just go up, left, down, right in that order. So I can't go up, I'll go left. I'll go up here, then I'll go right, then down. And then since left is has priority, I'll go left here. Then, But from here, I can also go left and down. But if I go left, I'll deactivate this. So let's say I prioritize tiles that are not activated. I'll go down here, then left, and then I'm boned because then I'm missing one tile over here. So I started trying to figure out whether or not DFS brute force was even a good idea. And uh, then I came to the other puzzle, which was a four by three here with arrows. And it just turned into a real mess like I start off over here if I use the same like brute force I'll go up left and then I'll go down but I'll be forced back up and then then where do I go from here it's like um, I'll go right and then I'll force down here then up here like what am I supposed to do uh, so I couldn't find a good heuristic for brute force and I don't really it doesn't seem like the right approach for something like this so I started looking at other things um, so for example this one is I started looking at graph theory so this is basically all of the levels are kind of graphs kind of they're not exactly because of some of them are kind of forced directions so this would technically be just a four by three graph like this with this uh, 12 vertices and a bunch of edges. So I'm just gonna denote a straight line as being a two way edge. Um, so in this case, these are all one way and you can only go left here, left here, left here and then over here actually these you can go back down but then you'll be forced right back up so this is like um uh, it's weird L like I said it's not exactly a graph um this one is only one way one way one way this is one way and yeah so this is your graph right here so when I was trying to come up with some kind of graph thing um, I needed two conditions to fill for uh, solving this graph, which is um, I have to visit every node at least once. That's the first condition. And the second condition is I have to visit every node an odd number of times. And I hope that's obvious why I have to visit an odd number of times because if I visit a node twice or four times or six times or any even number of times, it'll be deactivated. So for example, I start off over here, visit it once. I'll visit this one once if I go down and then if I go right back up, I'll visit it twice, but it'll be deactivated. So anytime I visit a node an even number of times, it's deactivated. So these are the two conditions. Visit every node at least once, and I have to visit it an odd number of times in order to solve this thing. So I couldn't really find any good answers, any good graph theory algorithms for this either. So I'm kind of getting stuck here. Then I started looking at uh, computational complexity problems and this might be one of the NP hard problems because I looked at things like traveling salesman uh, problem 
and it looks kind of similar ish but uh yeah so this might not be feasible right now to try to solve but again i'm not really sure because i don't know too much about that stuff um so it's a little annoying because i really really wanted to have the best like the minimum number of moves here like your number your personal best and the actual minimum um so yeah that's kind of annoying anyway that's uh gonna be it for this video and hopefully i'll have a lot of levels by the next video or even have the game pretty much finished by the next video so uh yeah thanks for watching